Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Brody Welch, a licensed acupuncturist and self-care strategist. And as you know, one of my favorite things to do on the show is to introduce you to ways of taking care of yourselves that are less popular, uh, maybe under the radar, but potentially incredibly helpful and effective. Today's episode is for you if you deal with any kind of pain issue, if you are interested in a self-care strategy to help you feel comfortable in your body, to up your performance in athletics or prevent injury, potentially to change the way you feel in your body, you're going to want to tune in. My guest today is Sue Hitzman, who's the creator of the MELT Method, which is a simple self-treatment technique that helps people get out and stay out of chronic pain. She's a nationally recognized educator, manual therapist, exercise physiologist, and founding member of the Fascia Research Society. She's also the author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Melt Method, which has been translated into eight languages and helped over 200,000 people lead healthy, pain-free lives. She has a new book that is coming out in late April called Melt Performance, a step-by-step program to accelerate your fitness goals, improve balance and control, and prevent chronic pain and injury for life. Sue Hitzman, welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to talk to you. I have been referring people to melt practitioners. I have myself used the melt method for back pain. And I just, I, I'd love to know, first of all, where did it come from? Well, it spawned out of my private practice. You know, I was a, I've been in the fitness industry since I'm 16 and the uh, when I was 28, I kind of shifted out of fitness and into the healing hearts, in fact, because of my own chronic pain that I got into and started to explore bigger ways and more of a deeper understanding of what caused pain to become chronic. My private practice kind of shifted from working on primarily athletes who had pain because of an injury. And it kind of got more into people who were suffering more from chronic pain, either from disorders or diseases. And then when 9-11 happened in New York, I also understood how post-traumatic stress disorder can actually manifest as a physical pain in the body. And in that, I really kind of understood pain in a different way and started treating clients with more of this light touch therapeutic intervention instead of just trying to get muscles to rebalance. I started to really understand that, you know, your brain causes pain and your body is, you know, it's kind of a motivator for you to take action when your brain is sending you those signals and then to figure out, well, if it becomes chronic, how can you quell that? And in the early 2000s, I was working on a client who had chronic TMJ and migraines. She was suffering from a lot of pain and very debilitating. She couldn't really get out of her house all all the time. And I started to treat her with my hands and she could finally go a number of days without having a session with me. And after we started working three or four times, we could gap her sessions out a week, 10 days, but she'd always come back. And I would say, you know, it's something in your environment. We've just got to figure out what it is. And she said, well, if you could just invent a way for me to do to myself, what you do with your magic hands, I'd stay out of your office entirely. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I could do that. So I started playing around with balls and rocks and rollers. And I came up with an idea of taking PVC piping, wrapping it with bubble wrap. And then I wrapped a yoga blanket and a yoga mat around it. And I duct taped it together to give this more soft, compressive object to treat the body. And I shared it with her. She got better. She was gapping her sessions two, three, even four weeks. And that was the start of it. And by 2004, I just knew I had had something. I had helped thousands of people in my private practice at that point. And I coined the term melt. I thought, geez, maybe I could keep people out of my office entirely. If I could share this in a group environment, maybe I could create a group healing. Everybody could kind of come together and understand more about what it is in the body that causes pain beyond the brain. And I could educate them and empower them to self-care and be more proactive instead of reactive. And it worked. It was kind of a transformational time for me. 
And then by 2006, I started doing instructor trainings. And now I've got 2000 instructors worldwide in 28 countries, the books in eight languages. And I'm just kind of continuously trying to get messages out to people to educate them beyond diet and exercise. What are other healthful things that you can do to deter your body from giving you chronic aches and pains that could ultimately lead to a more sedentary lifestyle? To those who are familiar with this podcast and to those who are who maybe are not, um, Qigong is, of course, my recommendation of the mm. way to, to stay out of pain and prevent pain and to, uh, to be your own healer. It goes back thousands of years. It's rooted in Chinese medicine and it's yes. really, really effective. Anyway, uh, I love that you have found a way to clone yourself a gazillion times over. That's amazing. And I would love to know specifically a deeper answer to that. What does cause pain to become chronic? And if you can unpack for people a little bit about how trauma does live in the body, because these are things that we touch on on the show several times, uh, but that I think are still not necessarily obvious. All pain is not the same. There's different durations, locations, sensations of pain. And we've all experienced pain. So it's not like it's something that eludes people, you know, pain in general. And in fact, when pain is acute, you know, like you hit your hand with a hammer, you, you know, smash your head on the edge of a cabinet you left open, you trip down a flight of stairs, car accidents, those kind of things. When you have pain, even when you're sick, you have the flu or you have heartbreak, right? The body is sending you a message that something's not right. It's to alert you. And it's kind of like you're built an alarm system. And 100% of the time, our brain is what's producing our sense of pain. But along with pain comes inflammation. And the problem with inflammation is that it's not just in your brain, it's in your body. And oftentimes, that inflammatory response sends off a stress response in the body, and it makes your body take action to induce healing. And unfortunately, sometimes for people, that pain response doesn't just come up and then you address it and it goes away. And that's what eludes people is what about that pain that you suddenly wake up, it comes out of nowhere. You bend over and you pick up a pencil and your back goes out, right? Or you do the same down dog you've done 2000 times, only this time your hamstring rips right out of the attachment. And you wonder what is it that causes that type of pain? And the problem with that pain is it can become chronic. And a traditionally chronic pain is considered something that's, you know, from diseases or disorders. Like if you have uh, diabetes, that could cause leg pain indirectly because it causes neuropathy and neuropathy causes pain. So the diabetes didn't cause your pain. It's a side effect of that. So we've got this gamut of pain from acute to chronic, but in that gray area, the sudden chronic pain, these ones that come out of nowhere are a bigger problem because what people have to understand is if pain is, is an issue in your body, it's something that isn't resolving it's not just in your mind. You have an issue in your connective tissue. Most people don't really understand what fascia is and how it reacts and responds to our daily life. And in the MELT method, this is what I talk about. And this is what I think probably everybody would want to understand is that connective tissue is the collagen matrix under your skin. It's primarily made up of collagen, water, and these gel-like molecules, one of them in particular called hyaluronin, that creates this glideability of tissue that supports, protects, and stabilizes everything. And what recent science is starting to really understand is that daily living is causing this accumulative stress in the connective tissue and the fluid flow of fascia, if it's impeded upon, the, the thing you want to remember is that fascia, I guess you want to know, not even remember, but that fascia and our lymphatic system are inherently linked. In fact, they're practically inseparable. And there are these pre-lymphatic channels, kind of like the drain of a sink gets backed up. And if the fluid flow from fascia to lymph is not easily flowing, this can cause all sorts of bigger issues, not just pain problems, but your, your nervous system and what I call the autopilot, the autonomic components of your body that provide stability, start to get a little out of balance. And now you're getting symptoms that aren't just like my back hurts and my joints have stiffness, but now suddenly you're feeling like in the middle of the day, you're just exhausted. And then at night, when you try to fall asleep for as exhausted as you felt in the day, you can't fall asleep. 
You're not staying asleep. You're getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And that's causing a bigger effect because our cellular repair is dominant when we sleep. And so if you're not getting that restful night's sleep, it's accumulating more and more stress, more and more problems, and your body just can't self-regulate anymore. And that's usually when people have chronic issues it's their own natural self-regulation processes that have kind of gotten defunct. The stress regulator is on, 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 on all the time. And the body's repair process can't afford the, the boost. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't get back on track. And that can riddle our gut with a lot of inflammatory problems, a lot of neurotransmitter problems. Now you can't digest food. And when that happens, you get cloudy head. And now you got anxiety, depression, and a whole host of other symptoms that your mind is is being on as well. You're, you're, and I mean that by your conscious mind. And so the MELT method is really here to educate people on no matter what, where in the spectrum you are on pain, acute, chronic, sudden chronic pain, where, whatever it is that's giving you the dis-ease of your body. The thing that's important for active tissue is a renewable resource. Stimulate it. You can change this tissue. And much like a good house going in from day to day, clean it out and make sure that the tissue is moving and supple and has its supportive qualities can really transform any type of chronic problem. Could To recap some of that, that fascia is all throughout the body. It is connected to our lymphatic system. It's essentially, if we have an area, like just to put this in the language of Chinese medicine, that chi and blood need to flow freely around the body. And areas that are congested, where there's traffic, where there's backup, where the body's not able to get its resources to the area to either fix things that are uh, that need fixing, do the repairs or clean up um, or detoxify, that that's going to lead to chi stagnation or blood stagnation and pain. And that means also that the body's not fully able to communicate with all of its different parts. And that uh, that fundamentally is going to take us away from that really like if uh, the fascia is a, essentially a communication system of the body's consciousness throughout everywhere that it's going to be difficult for the body to integrate and do all these jobs um, correctly. And I think that just, yeah, what you said about sleep is so important. Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying, Brody, is, is, you know, you're the idea of like the blood stasis and this, and that's a cellular thing. Right. And so our cells, like, I think, you know, when, when we talk about fascia and, and really to kind of hit on that point is that fascia isn't just about the myofascia, which is like very popular now, this like muscle concept, but that as much as fascia supports our muscles and our bones, it's supporting our cellular system and our neurology. So it is the communication highway. And, and just how you've said it, you know, sometimes there's traffic jams in the highway and it backs things up and your body, the good news about the nervous system is it, it's not going to like stop you in your tracks and say, Hey, where there's a traffic jam, let's park the car. Instead, it's going to find side streets to get you around the traffic so that you still function. But mm, a lot of us are kind of functioning. It's like kind of having your computer on safety mode. Like some of the operating systems aren't working as well as they could. They're a little slow, but they're still there. You can still access the important ones, but some of the less important files are going to be harder to access. And that's the problem is that a lot of us actually are missing what I call prepaying signals, which are those like air sign messages that you're getting and you're just clicking it saying, oh, I'll update my programs later. I, I don't have time right now. And then after a while, that accumulation is really the curse of the body is that our body's ability to compensate for us is the blessing and curse of the body in general. It's, it's yes. actually compensating and helping us out and then we're not listening, right? And I'm curious if you can unpack a little bit what those pre-pain signals might be. Are we talking about stiffness? Are we talking about just like a, a, a part of the body that's getting our attention in some small, subtle way? And we're going, yeah, yeah, I'll get to you later. You're, you don't seem very urgent. The most basic pre-pain signals, when your connective tissue has that stiffening that happens, you, you've lost the supportive quality of it, or again, that fluid flow in it is, is starting to break down. You've experienced it even if you don't have pain, like when you sit for long periods of time and you get up and you feel like you just aged 40 years from sitting down, like your joints just don't move as fast. And it, you kind of make sounds when you bend over, oh, you know, you're getting up or whatever. And you wake up in the morning, your feet are stiff on the floor. And we've all experienced those types of pre-pain signals. In fact, a lot of 
people think that those are just normal day-to-day sensations. And I say, it's not normal, it's average. We're just so used to the average you know, sensations that we don't think they're a problem. But if you think of connective tissue like a river, daily living is putting sediment down in that river's flow. And if you never clear out that sediment, now you start getting more of those more notable symptoms like your, you know, one joint is really starting to bother you. You're constantly adjusting in your chair to get comfortable. From day to day, you notice that your neck or your low back, these primary spaces are very stiff and they ache, they feel sore. So if you're feeling those things, like the problem with that is most people either ignore it or they take a pill so that they don't feel it. They become like, you know, candy, ibuprofen, right? They're they're just desensitizing themselves to it. And that's a problem that can accumulate into those bigger issues that I described because when you take an anti-inflammatory, you're constantly taking a pill so that you're not feeling the ache and the pain. It's kind of like your fire alarm going off and you pulling the batteries out of the fire alarm when your toaster is on fire. You know, you take the batteries out, you don't hear the, the alarm, but the toaster is still on fire. And so you got to go into, and, and this is where Qigong and Ayurveda and acupuncture is that we, you know, in any of those types of mindsets, the message for people is to stop focusing on what's hurting because that's the symptom. That's somebody crying out for help. And our way usually of dealing with that is to walk up to it and beat it up, you know, is to go right after where we have the pain. And what more of these more mindful-based practices and certainly what MELT is, is to try to consider the indirect before direct approach to realize that the cause of your pain could very much be very far away from where you actually feel the sensation. And that's an important component of pain is to learn to address the cause rather than the symptom. Really important point, right? That where something's showing up isn't necessarily what's causing the issue. And really that we've talked about um, on the show before, listening to pain as a messenger, as opposed to trying to beat it into submission or just medicate ourselves to to get through the day without without perhaps addressing something that that needs addressing. I'm wondering, you you made the point about myofascia as just one part of the fascial system. Could you explain what you mean by that? Like, it, sort of, what is the rest of the fascial system then? Sure. So the, the, the entire continuum, you know, connective tissue is the completely inseparable tissue from skin to bone, head to toe. Collagen doesn't stop anywhere. It's actually infused within these other structures. So your organs are made of connective tissues, um, your bones, your blood, all of it has connective tissue in it. And if you go all, all the way down to the microscopic components of the extracellular matrix, the Fibers and the fluids that are being produced outside of your cells are what give your cells the the supportive infrastructure that they need so that they have a healthy environment to move about in. And so, you know, if we were to remove everything, we could remove every muscle cell, every blood cell, every nerve in your body. And if all you left were the fibrous and fluid components, you would actually still see the full shape of the human form. So the myofascia is the more linear components in your body that fascia is kind of surrounding and infused within so that it gives each muscle bundle its shape and its location. But outside of of the muscle, you have billions of sensory nerves living in this fascial tissue that's connecting to your skin and the receptors in the superficial fascia There's deep fascial membranes that look more thin and fibrousy. There's visceral fascia around the organs. The dura matter in your brain is fascia. So when we think of fascia, you have to really realize that it's, I mean, and you said it, Bertie, it's all connected, right? There's no separation in it. We just like to think of muscles as individual parts, but you could actually say you've got one big muscle with 700 compartments that separate it. So it's kind of like subcategories more than it's the big global system. So fascia in and of itself is a global continuum, three-dimensionally infused from skin to bone. There's no separation in it at all. 
I think it's so fascinating that it's essentially, it's this thing that ties the entire body together. It would be the largest organ, quote unquote, in the body. If it wraps around every cell, if it infuses all of our organs, all of our muscles, everything that is in the human form and, and there's nowhere that it doesn't go. And it's not something that anybody's learned about in school, right? It's a, it's a, only something in the in the realm of anatomy nerds, body workers, like those of us who who are working hands on with people that really um, have had an opportunity to study this system. And so, and that, yet, that's so it, true. Yeah, and and yet in Chinese medicine, I, I want to just draw this parallel to this thing called the San Jiao or the triple burner that was identified. It's um, the triple burner. Well, what is it? It's these three burning spaces in the body, spaces of transformation, and that uh, martial arts practitioners talk about lower dantian. We think about middle and upper dantian and qigong. But basically, it's like it's the triple burner is described as this like system of sluices and waterways. This this communication system. This organ that is formless but everywhere. You know, like that that it's uh, it has function but no form. And what it is, it's like it's a, it's water element and it's also fire element. So it's essentially it's we it, we associate it with um, well it's it's a, it has very much to do with the movement of fluids, but it's considered to be it's paired with the pericardium, which is about blood circulation and blood flow throughout the body. So I think it's fascinating that clearly they were like that what the Chinese medicine practitioners of thousands of years ago were alluding to is this fascial system that has everything to do with the movement of fluids through the body, uh, as opposed to the movement of something more ethereal like energy. It's something substantial that goes everywhere and, and affects everything. Yeah. You're saying like, I mean, I think that's funny. Like everybody always gets very, very quiet when you start using the word energy. And I'm like, well, there's this thing called physics. And, and actually if you look at the quantum physics and you go, you know, down to your DNA and you get into atoms and then you, you know, you look there and then there's nothing, right? So yes, yes, I think that the Chinese medicine has been talking about this. And I would even dare to say that the fascial system, the extracellular matrix is the chi of the body. It is the conduit of the energy force within us that allows the communication of our heart to our mind to connect that that allows our breathing and our ability to take a breath and take over for a moment the autonomic components that are actually the most important. Like if you stop breathing, you cease to live. And isn't it compelling that the one autonomic function that we could actually consciously take over for a second is the breath? And so it's so important that people realize that like medicine is there and and oftentimes very important, but when it comes to healing and it comes to connection, that's the beauty of fascia is that it it is a vibration system. It's the, it's the system that allows the sixth sense and the seventh sense, the interoception, the proprioception, the mechanoreception, these billions of sensory receptors that live in our fascia that the brain is relying upon to send and receive information through the body so that the brain always has connection to us somewhere. And the fascia is really allowing that. So we want to paint a bigger picture of fascia because again, in the world today, if you've heard about fascia, probably it is back to that first point. It's you probably heard about myofascia, But now what you've done is you've jumped into the macroscopic, the macrocosm of fascia, the global supportive architecture of your bones and muscles that allows the bones to float. And that's what keeps us stable. So in in recent times, what even a lot of the educators in fascia are trying to educate people on is that we're not a biomechanical system. We're always talking about levers and things like that, but we're not biomechanical. We're biotensegrity systems. We are a whole body continuum and it's the fascia that makes that so. And so if what you want to do is understand how to keep your body supported, keep the whole body communication stable and keep your body in a good conditioned place, then fascia is in fact the secondary component of your nervous system, I would call it the neurofascial system, is really the more important component of that macro view of your muscles and bone architecture. And then the beauty about the tensegrity model is no matter how microscopic you get, you could go down into using a micron microscope and really looking at the extracellular matrix now, the, the finite components of fascia, 
And the same architectural structure, this chaotic system is found everywhere. And that's really what's so profound about it is that fascia is also providing our cells and our nerves a supportive infrastructure, an environment to thrive in. So it really interplays with everything from our emotional state, our physical state. Um, you know, when we talk about stability, you know, your chi, whatever that is, it is, is to say emotionally, chemically, physically, neurologically, psychologically, am I stable? Am I balanced? And if the answer is, I don't think so, then the two systems you want to try to tap into are your fascial system and your nervous system, because that's where it begins and ends in my mind. If you've got a healthy curiosity, you want to know how you can be doing right by your body and how to live a more mindful, streamlined life in accordance with your values. While I love that you tune into the show every week, are you taking action? If not, why not? Here are the top three roadblocks that could be holding you back. One, thinking that knowing is doing. They're different things. Knowing the properties of herbs is different than actually taking them. Knowing how to change a habit is different than actually changing up your routine. Knowing is the first step, but the second, third, fourth, and hundredth steps involve action. Number two, thinking that because you're smart and used to being successful, that you need to do it all yourself. This one dogged me for years as an independent-minded overachiever. That is, until I realized that one, I can't see my own blind spots, and two, I don't know what I don't know. Now, I'd much rather work with a guide who can point out the shortcut for the path I want to travel rather than get lost in the woods alone. Not only is it way easier, but I'm more likely to show up for myself if I've told my coach or my mastermind partners what I'm trying to do. Reason number three, thinking that you don't have the money. What we spend money on is a reflection of what we're prioritizing. Maybe it's time to prioritize you. I'm opening up my calendar for a handful of one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. I've helped thousands of women break up with stress, optimize their habits, mood, hormones, weight, and vitality with integrative body-mind tools from Chinese medicine, yoga, neuroscience, coaching, and ancient wisdom. Just as importantly, I pour my heart into each of my clients and you will feel that love in every single interaction. If you're ready to feel more calm and confident in your own skin, start feeling younger every year, feeling like you're at the center of your own life rather than just getting through it, and feel loved and supported in the process, head over to the Work With Me page at brodywelch.com and apply to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. That's Brody with an I-E and Welch with a C-H. Now back to the show. Let's talk about that a little more. I mean, in Chinese medicine, we have different kinds of qi that address different kinds of issues in the body. But certainly if we're talking about, about just the ability to be comfortable in our bodies, right? To not experience pain at the very least, to not experience stiffness, we need a certain amount of suppleness and different connective tissue are like that. Typically that we, the liver is responsible for the quote unquote tendons and sinews. So basically what they're getting at is the things that aren't muscle, like spleen and stomach are considered the rulers of muscle, but the liver gallbladder, the wood element is supposed to be about is the connective tissue in general. And if the wood element, the archetype is the tree, the tree needs to be stable. As you were mentioning, we need this stability of our nervous system, our ability to not be so tight, so tense, so reactive, or so fragile and brittle that we can't move without injury. So we need a certain amount of suppleness. And that suppleness comes from the water element. It comes from not just being hydrated, but the health of our of our fascial system so that we can have the flexibility and the adaptability to roll with the winds of change and to, and to, and to physically do the things of life that are demanded of us on a physical level, on a psychological level. So I think we're very much talking about something that is uh, th it, like for the stability discussion that uh, neurological stability, I would put that in kind of liver chi category and liver blood. Liver blood is what is essentially uh, and liver yin hydrate the tissue, the connective tissue in the fascia. So that's um, that just for the medicine. Nerd. Connective tissue, you could consider just one big endocrine organ, right? So mm -hmm. if you're talking about the glandular system, the liver, um, you know, thyroid, thalamus, hypothalamus, I would put the fascia in that type of category. It is one big endocrine gland. I mean, your superficial fascia where we store fat there are neurotransmitters and hormones living in those layers of our body that are also interacting and communicating with the liver and with the other organs. So yes, I, I say 100% to all of those things. 
It is a global, you are really talking about that global vibration, that global frequency that is in, or that are in these tissues. And that's why, you know, you can do acupuncture and, you know, a couple of needles can completely alter pain and digestion and all sorts of things. So it's, it's powerful. For the people who do not are who are not familiar with the melt method yet, uh, they've been listening to this conversation about fascia. But I'd love for you to just make it really concrete as to like how exactly is working with fascia different than say stretching a muscle or doing some self massage on, as we might typically work on a spot that hurts. We might rub our shoulder, grab the tissue, move it around. We might uh, we might open a joint. Um, you know, like I think people have a sense of you know, a lot of people have taken yoga classes, et cetera. What's different about working with the fascial system? And can you maybe give us a sense of what, what it looks like to be engaging the melt process? The basic melt protocol, I call the four R's of melt, reconnect, rebalance, rehydrate, and release. And the uniqueness about melt is the uh, reconnect me the thing about pain, like if you're suffering with pain it, and I get that, you know, when you're in pain, You want to tune it out. You don't want to go into your body and sense what you feel because it just hurts in there. And so the real important thing is if you're in pain is that you really do have to go in your body to get yourself out of pain. And what I've developed are these assessment protocols to get people's minds away from focusing on where they feel pain and to begin to tune into these common imbalances that many of us possess that are left unaddressed from day to day. And the ones that I point out that are real specific are the ones that end up uh, compressing our neck and low back unnecessarily and destabilize what I call the neurological core system, the actual conduit between the brain to the pelvis the the channel, the tubular core, the reflexive core mechanisms that that provide stability involuntarily. The rebalance sequences basically are there to then help quiet the stress reflex in the nervous system and boost the body's natural repair processes. And then what I developed were these soft balls and these soft rollers to help people ease compression into their bodies or ease tension into their bodies in a very organized way through what we call rehydrate techniques. So a lot of people are familiar with, you know, like, I mean, you just, something hurts you, you want to massage it, you want to roll on, on a ball or on a, on a hard roller. And the question I always have for people is, what is the objective that you're looking to achieve? What's the outcome? And they say, well, I want to get rid of my pain. And I said, so If your back hurts you and you get on a roller and you iron the areas that hurt, like, why are you causing pain to get out of pain? Like, why do we go after those areas? And so at Melt, you you learn to work toward the areas of pain rather than going right directly to them. And then, of course, we have the release concepts, trying to release the unnecessary tension that we manifest in our neck, our low back, our hands, our feet, to decompress some of that unnecessary tension And so it's a very mindful-based practice. And after you do some of the techniques, whether it's a rebalance or a rehydrate, then you go back and you reassess your own body. And in that moment of the reassessments, it's not just for you to value the changes, but it literally helps what I call the autopilot, the parts of our body that are trying to support, protect, and stabilize us to reset to a new place and to allow that new information of that brain of ours to go back through our body and do those body scans to sense what it feels. It helps the autopilot regain its stability to bring it back to what I call the easy zone. So tapping into fascia, instead of just the muscles and and thinking about, oh, my muscle spindles, I'm going to release the sarcomeres and all these fancy terms. Instead, what we want to do is just support the supportive system of our body, which systems provide stability, your nervous system and your fascia. And instability can be defined as a system that is supposed to be providing stability as saying it's lost its ability to do that job. And daily living causes the fascial network to lose its supportive qualities, to get too stiff, which can cause hypermobility in our joints. It can cause stiffening. It can cause compression in our, it is like stiffening in the muscles. Uh, It can cause fibrosis. It can cause joints to compress. And again, it can, it can cause a host of neurological shutdown in the body that can then lead to digestive issues, sensory motor imbalances, 
And over time, just emotional instability can then transpire from those things. So really working with fascia helps to ground our body, um, like the foot treatment, trying to really regain ground reaction force and helping the brain figure out where its central vessel is, where's the pelvis, where's the diaphragm, where's the head in relationship to the feet. It gives the body time to reconnect. And again, I think that's an important component of self-care is to kind of shy away from having to fix everything and to more just support the systems that fix us naturally. And that's, I think, the message about MELT. Um, and in the new book, Melt Performance, we go more into that detail of once you've hydrated the tissue, how can I kind of relink my sensory motor functions to improve joint stability specifically to try to reestablish the stability of my spine, my shoulder, my hips, so that I move more efficiently. That to me, I think is the, the beauty of Melt is that it's just about supporting the supportive systems so that it improves the natural efficiency of all of the autonomic functions that we take for granted are working until they don't. And now we're just being reactive. We're not really proactive with pain. We do things after we've got it, not a way to prevent it. And, you know, you got to go to the other side. You have to become proactive because otherwise what you're doing is you're exciting the medical and the pharmaceutical industries waiting for you to react, get desperate and go down that funnel of taking all those drugs so that you stop feeling something, but not necessarily ever fixing you, but just kind of like putting band-aids over something until you really notice, wow, I've got 17 band-aids on my leg. Maybe I should do something about it. It's really a bias in our culture to be focused on the yang, right? The, the, the strength yes. building, the doing more, the doing it faster, the pushing ourselves till it hurts, the, you know, like if something hurts to go at, after it with, with additional, to meet hard with hard as opposed to meeting hard with soft. And it's like one thing that really strikes me about the melt approach is that, you know, you talk about like when you were creating it, it wasn't the PVC pipe by itself. It was like you were wrapping it in yoga blankets and foam rollers and things like that. The balls that you use are soft. It's about engaging the system with a gentleness that allows the nervous system to, to get comfortable, right? Like that there's, there's a yin state that it helps to induce. It's a slow practice. It's a gentle practice. It's an indirect practice, as you're talking about, that seems to be quite balancing to the uh, like the repetitive motion injuries that you know that that can result in so much of of the dysfunction that people experience and the pain that people experience it just seems like a very natural what's missing from a, a lot of people's approach to working on their bodies quote unquote isn't that the whole industry problem of fitness, right? It's the dirty little secret of fitness is everybody's in the fitness industry is injured, right? So there's your what's missing, right? If diet and exercise aren't the recipe to get yourself into a healthy, longevity-ridden state of, of health, what's missing is just what you're saying is to go more to the yin side, to stop thinking that you've got to be more and I've got to work harder. I've got to push harder. I've got to go harder. That's it is that we're, we're driving ourselves into a ground where really instead of pushing harder, what if we just ease back and again, became more supportive of the system's functions? I think it's just a unique way to think about the body that we don't need to push it sometimes. We need to give it reprieve. We need to learn to support the, the repair processes of our body, not the stress processes of our body. Sister, yes. <laughs> Speaking my language here. So I'm wondering if people need special equipment in order to get started on this stuff, or is there a way that people can experience a little bit of what you teach on their own? The balls and the rollers that I've developed are specific to the method. The, the roller is only five inches round. It's softer and it actually has a rubber-based material to it. So it generates heat when you're on it. And the balls and, and, and with the rollers, they're non-latex. There's no phthalate. So to actually do melt, you'd want the tools. But in general, some things that are just, you know, if I had to give somebody things to think about in a day that don't need any tools, you don't need anything. Like first would be to sip water frequently because 
sipping, just sipping a little bit, like if all you did was take one sip of water every 15 minutes on a cellular level, you'd stay more hydrated on that deep intrinsic cellular components of your body rather than drinking, you know, like a liter of water and then not drinking for three hours. If that liter of water lasted you three hours because you only sipped a little every 15 minutes, you'd stay more cellularly hydrated. That's an Ayurvedic traditional thing for cleaning out the lymphatic system is to drink plain water throughout the day, uh, like ideally room temperature or warm. Um, yes. Yes. Drinking water like every 15 minutes throughout the day. And that at the end of the day, if you need this flush, your body will want to do it again. And in which case do it for the next couple of days. But that's a, it's just a really simple, really easy way of making sure that your lymphatic system is capable of just really opening the drains and <laughs> detoxifying. That's right. And then the second would be, you know, if you're sitting for most periods of your day, right, that that's really sitting is like, the, you know, we've been saying this for a long time, sitting is the new smoking. I always say it's like the desk sentence. You're sitting yourselves to death sitting all day long. <laughs> I so like it. if you have to sit, which is, I get it. You know, I mean, I sit a lot too. I actually have one of those tables that can come up and down so that I can stand sometimes like I'm standing right now as I'm talking to you and just getting up every half an hour and you don't need to like, you know, go for a power walk, just stand up, ground your feet, bring your arms up overhead, take the biggest breath you can. And then on your exhale, bring your arms down and just go shh, and then bring your arms back up overhead, take a big breath in and then let your arms come down. Shh, and you do that four or five times. And you're, you're doing so much for your cellular system doing that. You're, you're releasing some of the unnecessary tension and compression that you're causing to the fascial tissue on the backside of your body and on your diaphragm. You're stimulating blood flow. You're stimulating chi. You know, you're, you're stimulating circulation. And this in and of itself is so vital to the longevity of you. It's a simple habit to get in. If you're sitting there, you look up at the clock every half hour, 40 minutes, just get up and just, you know, you're going to look funny and people are going to be like, what the hell is she doing? But you just do it, get yourself moving. And then a another thing to think about is just in general, trying to get your heart rate to come up from what is your normal heart rate every day, even if it's just for five minutes, again, just bringing your arms up overhead and bringing them down with a strong exhale will activate the core reflex, increase the heart rate, increase some blood flow. And that can just be a great thing. And, you know, just getting outside, go, you know, stand in grass, try to stand on real earth. Don't stand on cement. You know, we're, we're bound in our shoes all the time. Getting out into nature is so important for us. And I would say the other thing, just again, for your overall health is community, is connection, is happiness, is finding people that are not toxic in your life, to weed out the toxic people, to embrace the people that support you, to tell someone you love them every day, to hug somebody, to say thank you to someone. All of these things on a cellular level are actually one of the most important components of our overall health and well-being. You know, you don't need the MELT method to do that. I think it's common sense. It's common sense, but it's so overlooked. And really just that what you said about going outside, it's like it is such simple advice and so many people don't do it. And it makes a world of difference. Uh, yes to connection. I, and then really that's, these are simple, easy things that we can all do each and every day. And because they're so easy and simple and free, it's easy to devalue them in, in favor of things that are with a lot more complexity. But like anything, we treat with opposites. And so the, the antithesis and the opposite of busy and chaos, a lot of times is to just go simple, just do something simple. Agreed. Help you feel better. Sue Hitzman, it has been a true pleasure talking with you today. I, I know that I've learned something new about fascia, and I hope that listeners have um, as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about where people can stay connected to you and where they can get the book? Sure. So you can go to meltmethod.com, M-E-L-T method.com. And there you'll find all about the book. I'm actually going out on a book tour all of May and June the book Melt Performance. You can pre-order now. It's on Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes and Nobles. Pre-order a book now. I'll be on doing book signings all across the country. And again, the book tour will be in, you know, all over the place from East Coast to West Coast, Dallas. Uh, we'll be all over the place. We'll be up in Chicago, Boston, California, New York, Florida. 
Denver. So definitely uh, check that out. You can also go to YouTube. You could find um, some Melt videos there to learn a little bit about it. And we're very active on Facebook, on social media. Every day, actually, through April, I'll be doing a live post, a little live conversation. So if you really have a a real question you want to ask, ask it, and I'm I'm happy to try to answer it for you. But uh, meltmethod.com, we've got a streaming platform called uh, Melt On Demand. You can stream all of the videos. You can get the video library. And we also have a button called Find Melt. We've got thousands of instructors who are all around the world. And if you're suffering with any type of chronic pain, before you take your own self-care 100% into your own hands doing melt, I would type into Find Melt, I put your zip code in and see if by chance there's a melt instructor, because taking a group class can sometimes really be the catalyst for understanding what your specific needs are and having that personal touch, I think is so valuable. So see if there's an instructor near you as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time and your pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You can also head to brodywelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.